Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another episode of Raji's Garage. Now, in the previous episode, I showed you my 964 Turbo, which has got some engine issues that's been dropped off at Northway Porsche. And from what I understand, Paul's already given that car some love. But today, we're gonna to be focusing on another Cosworth-inspired car, and that's my Mercedes 190E 2.5 16 valve. <laughs> It's the later model. The earlier model had the Cosworth head. The earlier model was a 2.3. This being the 2.5 has got dual row timing chains and an improved head gasket. It's definitely a better car than the earlier variant. This still has the five speed manual get track uh, gearbox where first gear is a dog leg, which is uh, left and down. So I've owned this car since March, 2023. So nearly a year and I haven't really driven it much, although we've given the car some love previously. Um, so when we bought the car, she wasn't running right, hadn't been serviced. So the first thing we did, obviously full service, changed the belts, uh, the exhaust was blowing. So we've now got a Super Sprint exhaust and she was running pretty well for a while until I started noticing that every time I went to start the car, there were some major idling issues and the car would stall if I hit a roundabout or if I'm at traffic lights and the car's warm, it would still stall. Also, uh, we noticed in one of our previous episodes when we went out for a drive, there was a bit of blue smoke coming at the back, enough to get me a little bit worried. So, the car's been parked up for a while, I just lifted the cover off, it's on trickle charger. The plan today is to take the car over to Jamie at JTEC Automotive. Uh, we've been speaking for about a couple of months, the car's been booked in, and he will sort out the idling issue and look at that blue smoke. Now, I am hoping it's a short and inexpensive repair. I don't really want to get a phone call or an email from Jamie and tell me that it's got head issues or engine issues. So fingers crossed guys, I don't really want to be throwing a lot of money at another car. The 964 Turbo potentially could have a, an engine rebuild issue. So that's gonna be quite expensive. Let's jump into it and let's uh, take it over to JTEC. Before I do, let me give you an idea of those uh, idling issues and the starting issues. As you can see, there are a few idling issues. It's sitting at about 800 RPM, which isn't about right. So I might have to stand here for about a couple of minutes and just let it warm up a touch, let the fluids sort of go through the engine. Uh, but this is one of the biggest issues. Fingers crossed it won't be an issue getting over to uh, Jamie's place. But yeah, let it, let it warm up. I'll then pull it out and then off we go. Right guys, here at JTEC Automotive, as you can see. Um, she actually drove quite well on the way down, although I was left foot braking. Uh, there's a bit of traffic on the M4. And I was concerned that if I stall, she might not start again. So left foot braking, a bit panicky, but other than that, drove quite sweet. Um, let's grab Jamie, uh, have a chat, and then do a handover. Hello again. Hello mate, you right? It feels like I was only here yesterday. Yeah, you stay away too long. It gets expensive coming here. Classic cars do. <laughs> I know, that's the problem with classic cars. Um, so, another project. So yep. you've, you sorted the E-Series 1, you sorted the Renault yep. 5, yep. you sorted the E46 M3 track car. Yep. And now this is potentially one of three that I'm bringing you yep. for 2024. Right. Uh, the first one, obviously, 190E, 2.5, 16 valve, later model, uh, should be the better model, but the way it's running at the moment, I'm um, hesitant to say that. Yeah. Um, so in brief, two concerns. First, idling issue. Now on the way down, got stuck on the M4 and I was using my left foot to brake because yep. I was concerned that if the idles drop too low, it will stall yep. and it might not start. Does it struggle restarting when it's hot? 
it has once or twice and I could have maybe been a bit overzealous and flooded, flooded the engine yep. and I've had to wait five minutes. I can't be doing that on the M4 in the nope. fast lane. No, not at all. Um, so th there's that. That's probably the minor concern. The major concern is the blue smoke uh, under load when what? I'm changing gear. There's a puff of blue smoke. Um, so that is a concern because these cars are meant to be driven hard and I'm concerned in pushing it hard because I might break something. You don't want your engine to smoke. You don't want it to smoke fuel, oil, emissions. It's not good for anyone. It's not, certainly not good for the engine if it is smoking. Sure. Um, but it could be breathers. It could be um, stem seals. It could be rings. Could be anything between A and Z. It, it's, until we get into it, it's very hard to say. Okay, so before I do a handover, shall we pop the bonnet? Yeah. Um, and maybe you might be an amazing mechanic, and just by looking at the engine, you could be able to tell what's wrong. Be surprised. So guys, don't kill me in the comments. I know it needs a bit of insulation there. We'll sort that out. Uh, very, comp well, it's not compact. It's a big engine in a compact uh, engine bay, isn't it? Yeah, there's a lot going on. Mechanical injection, there's always loads of faff in there, but um, yeah, they're all right, they're good. It's, uh, you've they, had a, you've had a rodent in here. Though. Have I? Yeah. Got a fair amount of rats at work, so yeah. it could be. No, it is, look, it's chewed. Oh, yeah. Well, that's chewed. Okay. But yeah, it's, um, it's quite original. It's not been mucked about with too much. It is stock, everything is stock, uh, down to the suspension, the wheels. The only thing that we've refreshed is the exhaust. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm going to leave it in your hands. Yep. Um, here is the key. I'm hoping when I get that email from you next week, it's a very short email. It's short done. thread, short email, and a very small bill. We could drain all the oil out and then it won't smoke. Well, then I'm gonna have a heap load of other problems. Then it won't even rebuild. <laughs> okay, so I'll see you in a week or two maybe, perhaps. Yeah. And uh, we'll then uh, do a roundup of what you've done, what you found, and we'll go for a drive and see how she feels afterwards. Look forward to it. Good man, cheers. See you later, mate. Yep. I'm entrusting Jamie and the lads with the 190E for now. We'll circle back to it later in the episode. Meanwhile, it's time to address the less than ideal interior situation of my Macau Blue E30 M3 convertible. My Macau Blue E30 M3 convertible, which I purchased two and a half years ago. Um, it took me about a year to get it running right and there again there's a separate episode on the main cast tv channel we'll put a link to that in the description below i showed you the rear bench which had a tear in the top that had been collected the week prior by max from hawks auto works and his job was to fix the top section of the bench and it was not an easy fix now max's job was to repair the sections at the top here where this this the stitching had come away so over time, the top section of the bench is exposed to the elements, to the sunlight, and the leather here had become very hard and had stretched itself and the, the stitching had come away. Now, Max did say it might not be an easy fix, and he was right. Taking the leather apart, it's, it's like cardboard. It is so stiff, uh, and that's the top section on one side. And this is the section which was ripped and it is literally is like cardboard. Once he took the center section off, it, he found out that it's virtually impossible to stitch it and stretch the leather to the other two sections. So in the end, we've had to replace the top sections of the bench and the center section. Yes, there is a difference in the color of the leather. They'll be sent away to get uh, re-dyed. Originally, I was going to get it re but uh, a few trimmers have told me don't do that because it doesn't last very long. So I shouldn't really be looking at throwing four, five, six thousand pounds at re-trimming everything. Just get it re-dyed. So yeah, as you can see here, guys, it's stitching is perfect. The, it matches the stitching on both sides. And if I show you the back here, you can see where Max has pulled the leather back. It's stretched, it's nice and tight, and it's been pinned in and put back together literally as good as factory, if not better than factory. I'm not going to be refitting the interior, so I'll show you the interior uh, once it's all re-dyed, and then we'll be taking the car over to uh, Bob, 
over at uh, Auto Body Technique who has been instructed by me to paint the car. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're keen on catching further updates on my E30 M3, along with all the latest happenings with my other cars. I am back. A few weeks on, we're here at JTEC Automotive, and I got a call from Jamie the other day. The Mercedes 190E 2.5 is ready to collect. Um, still unsure of what they've done, but I have been told that they fixed virtually everything. The car is here, check it out. Doesn't she look beautiful? Now, hopefully today, I'll be driving back with a car that starts on the button, doesn't have the idling issues, and hopefully no more blue smoke. So let's find Leo, um, who's been working on the car, and uh, he can explain what he's done. Hello, Leo. How are you doing? I'm good. Working away on golfs, hey? Yeah, that's my home from home. For me, yeah. So how was it working on a, another German car, but a Merc? It was testing, testing. A few, few more white hairs? We got there in the end. Yeah, yeah the greys are coming in <laughs> like you would not believe. It's not just my kids that call me. Yeah. Okay. Right, let's go outside. We'll have a walk around the car and you can explain what you've done. So we'd been through the car and we'd fixed and replaced a lot of components. And we thought we got it to a point where actually it was usable, but it was far from usable. So what was your plan? Was there a plan or was it like scratch your head and let's just go through it? It was a bit of a head scratcher that we were individually dropping onto just to try and get a feel of what the issue was at the beginning. On cold start, it was really bad. And that was the biggest issue, just getting the damn thing started. In the process of diagnosing it, every day you'd start, well, you'd have to start and really feather the throttle, Correct. try and keep the revs up and hold, hold the revs up for a while until it came exactly. out of that warm up phase. Exactly that. And then it would just about hold its own. And then you tried moving it about and it would, mm. it would drop again. All right, so let's, let's pop the bonnet and then you can explain what you've done. I love the bonnets on these works. You know, the fact they go all the way up. Obviously not being a Mercedes specialist, a bit of online help. Sure. Trawling what's left of the forums. Sure. Checking basics like the function of the coolant temp sensor, which gives right. the ECU a signal. So if that had failed, they can be chucking loads more fuel in on a cold start. Well, and, and whilst after its warm up phase, still chucking a load of fuel in because it was stinking eye wateringly rich. Yes. The whole time. It was a bit of a case because of the age of it. We don't like just chucking parts, but they're at the point where you kind of need to almost replace all of those failure points, put fresh fuel in it because the fuel was stale. Which is unusual because I did put new fuel in it, but then I hadn't, I haven't put many miles on it since I bought the car, and it's been sitting around. And, and I guess that's not helped. Well, I'm going by what Dan said when he got okay. showered in it, and he <laughs> said he stunk a stale fuel okay. for the rest of the day. Um, yeah, these are right. Yeah, you haven't got that on camera, have you? By the way, we don't, unfortunately. Oh. No. If we had that, on the, camera. The, the, the inside <laughs> camera just misses where he was working. Okay. Yeah, these are just at that point before. OBD, diagnostics. Yes. So it's, it's so basic, the stuff on this. What you do is there's a link wire. I say a link wire, you just cut a piece of wire, mm -hmm. bare both ends, go in two, two of the terminals here, and that will either give you a, depending on how long you hold it in, will give you a blink code. So you read off the number of code, the number of blinks, and it will relate to a certain fault. And, and then you hold that wire in for 10 seconds, pull it out and it will clear that light, clear the code. A lot of fault finding and more technical mumbo jumbo later. I think Leo may have found the problem at last. There's a sort of potentiometer that shows the position of the flap. Right. To tell the ECU how much fuel, how much fuel to give. But I took it off. It's got two tracks that two brushes on the metering flap run against and there was a dead spot. And checking the resistance on it, it had a complete dead spot as you open and move the flap through its range of motion. So we thought that's, that's got to be it. Sourced another one, read all over the forums that you can't replace them 
you can't right. set them up. And right. then I found a brilliant video on YouTube with some German guy. Was, he, was he speaking German or was it? No, English? it was, it was, it was in, in English. Okay. Yeah, really good video. And um, yeah, you basically have to set the voltage, leave, the, leave all the pinch bolts slightly loose so you can move it on the spindle, set the voltage with the car at running temperature, which I did. So that, that was the ultimate <laughs> fix, but there were... There were a little bit of pieces. Whether it was that like. OVP relay yeah. may have had a dry solder internally because wiggling it and moving mm. it about did. I suppose the combination of everything you've done That's and replacing thing. those parts, you, you're probably not going to know which is the part that fixed the, me the idling issue, but replacing those parts uh, has now fixed the idling issue. It's absolutely bang on. Cold, Cold start. start. Every day we've started it. Perfect. It's the smallest thing which is causing the biggest headache and the biggest yeah, problem. Yeah. Right, shall we uh, give it a cold start and see how it, how it performs? It's definitely better. Oh wow! And that's on a cold start. That's cold start. Fingers crossed. Video. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Wow, what a difference. Okay, so I guess the. The best thing for me now is to A, first settle the bill and B, drive it back and see how she performs on the journey back, the yeah. sort of 45 minutes back to Hayes. Um, if anything, if this is to go by, I should have a nice drive back. I think you will. I think I enjoyed the road test. Good. Not being a Merc fanboy, I was a bit like getting used to the dog, dog leg, leg, but yeah, once you got a feel for it. Look, they're not super quick cars, but they're, no, they're, but fun, they're fun for, cars. For that, for that era, they've yes. got some punch to them. It's... Yes. Right, so yeah, let me settle the bill, and then uh, I'll get, get in the car and drive back to Hayes. Leo, thank you very much. No right, we are back in Hayes. It's the next day, parked the car in the unit overnight, and started on the button. No idling issues whatsoever. So I can genuinely say that the guys at JTEC have done a fantastic job with the idling. Now, let's see how she drives. Uh, on the way back from JTEC yesterday, the car drove exceptionally well and warmed up now, so I've got nice water temperature and I'm sure the oil temperature is up as well so let's give it some beans third gear and she pulls she pulls okay don't forget this is a 30 year old car so it's not going to pull like a, a Mercedes SL55 AMG but she pulls well and definitely better than before night and day difference in fact third gear still going still going fourth gear still going and driving in a straight line not pulling to either side brakes are pretty good as well so yeah night and day difference so 10 out of 10 for JTEC well done Jamie Dan and Leo now I know it's Leo that spent most of the time sorting this car out and uh, this car was a challenge I've got to say and some knob pulls out in front of me and he's giving me a dirty look. What a <laughs> What a <laughs> dead. details are in the description below. Make sure you hit them up direct. If you have any classic cars or any new cars that need some work, and I'm sure they will look after you just like they looked after me. And my bill was friendly too as well. So it was probably a little bit less than I anticipated. I thought there'd be more issues knowing the car's blowing blue smoke, but as they said, it was all down to fuel ink, old fuel, and I don't think there is any blue smoke coming out of the exhaust now. And obviously in time, we will ensure that we keep an eye on that. So next up for this car has got to be the suspension because the suspension is tired and is rather boaty. As you can see here, leaning in to one side uh, so next up will be the suspension and i need to change the wheels so amg monoblocks some aeros and i want to sort of keep it period correct so i think a merc wheel is the way to go so if anyone has a set of amg aeros or some monoblocks or something like that hit me up drop me a dm 
and maybe we can do a deal. I don't mind if they need refurbishing. Uh, we've got Ellie for that over at Voodoo Motorsport. So yes, suspension, wheels, and then we've got to get some music in this car. It's got an original Blaupunt Montreal CR40 cassette, which does work, but has seen better days. I think the speakers are shot, so we'll upgrade the stereo, we'll change the speakers, add some bass, and add an alarm. No security on this car whatsoever. As we all know, values of these classic cars is on the increase, and the last thing you want to do is leave it parked up somewhere, come back, and it's gone. So, we'll add a Clifford alarm. Gotta say, she does pull. I don't think this car has driven as well as this for a good few years and I know the previous owner Mitesh when he bought it he parked it up he hardly drove it so chuffed to bits guys chuffed to bits now if you like this sort of content you know what you need to do you need to smash the like button and make sure you subscribe to the channel I typically drop an episode every two weeks on Raji's garage in the next episode I believe we'll be back over at Northway Porsche uh, getting an update on my 964 Turbo. Paul and the team have ordered a fair few parts for that engine rebuild. So uh, we'll be giving them a visit and we'll be talking parts and money. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you on another episode on Raji's Garage. Make sure you smash that like button.